Hello, YouTube. Almost had a little faux pas there with going live and scheduling a stream. Ugh. Anywho, I'm live stream. I'm going to wait till a couple of my chatters get in the box before we continue. So if you're watching the recording, you might want to scoot ahead a couple minutes. Otherwise, I'm basically talking to myself and Lord knows I do enough of that. There's a couple. Hey, Joan. Hey, Z. <laughs> Every time I say, hey, Z, Siri comes on my computer. <laughs> so I don't know how long this is going to last today. I'm not feeling wonderful. I had, um, you guys might remember, about five years ago, I ended up in the hospital for a couple of days with a pinched nerve in my neck from degenerating discs that took out the plexus nerve bundle in my right arm. Then I had to, hey Jan, then I had to go through a series of spinal injections of steroids. And then I was fine for five years. And the other day I was in the shower. I looked down at the bench to pick something up off the bench in the shower. And when I tilted my head down, that same familiar pain shot down the back of my neck and started across my right shoulder blade. So looking down at my desk is not the most comfortable position. I do have an appointment tomorrow with my neurologist. So, hi, Susan. Yeah, so I don't know how long I'm going to last because I thought it was a good idea to stream and I got down here setting up and with my head tilted down, I thought maybe this isn't the best idea. So we'll see how long I last, but we'll start farting around with something here to do get something done. Gala. I know. I have no idea what triggered it, what made it come back. I did nothing but look down. I look up and down all the time. Now, I can look to my left pretty smoothly, but looking to my right, I'm like a cat. I got to I gotta turn my whole body to look to my right. And looking up and down, I can feel it grab a little bit. So, I'm hoping, hoping that another series of spinal injections will help with the steroids again because the alternative don't even want to think about the fusion surgery but it's not terrible right now it's not terrible it was terrible five years ago that was bad but anyway you know is what it is could always be worse so let's get going while i'm while i last these are just from last week um Little, oh, I know what I want to do. Little watercolors that I cut up. We might do something the same because that's that's pretty mindless. <gasps> Don't say it, Gala. <laughs> Get that circle up there. That's that. I think that's the Aurora color. That's one of my favorites. Ah. And again. That same one. This was the embossing that went wrong. <laughs> I love this one. How it this. Look at that. Hello, lover. And a little bit of the green scripting over there. The cell phone camera kind of, or light kind of whites it all out because it's so bright but that's there we go that's better and then i don't know if i when i did this recently but just throwing some colors on the page and seeing what happened um oh no i did this because remember dot said there was a bird sitting on a nest but the egg broke and here's the broken egg She's always say, paints such a pretty picture, doesn't she, with her words? <laughs> hey, Mariah. Hey, Ange. All right, so let's let's do something. Um, get myself situated here for a minute. Oh, this is a. I don't need to 
take this off. This is a block. Oh, I got these. Um, remember I had the alcohol ink in this fine tip applicator. Um, and this is 20 gauge. And then I saw these pens. It's a fine liner, but it's like a pen shape. And these are a little hard to find now for some reason. But these are 21 and 22 gauge. If you're familiar with wire and how that works, the higher the number, the smaller the, the opening is of the wire. CB! So these will be even smaller tips. So I'm thinking about trying my... Um, my beloved iridescent bronze with a little distilled water in there. Possibly. We'll see. Um, these I don't need to get these out of my way. Just had my tape. Where's my tape? So let's do, I want to do, let's just do this in half. Instead of four little ones, let's just do two medium ones today. Yeah, um, I've seen them before, and actually I have some, but I think these are newer, um, same brand, but they're, the gauge is smaller on them, so I think they came out, but I had, where did I get these? Simon Says Stamp, I think. They didn't have these exact ones on Amazon. Patty, how do you always get stuff that I want before me? Yes, I have. It's AI. I have your house uh, bugged to see what you're up to. It's not always pretty, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have put this all on the paper. I should have let it go off the edge halfway. But that's okay. We're just going to carry on. Like I said, I'm not sure how long I'm going to last. If my neck jacks up any more than it is. I'll have to call it a day. Before today. Yeah, we've had such pretty weather here the last few days. Windows open around the clock. Nice breeze, no humidity. High 60s, low 70s. And now today we're... We're raining again, but as my grandmother always said, rain makes things pretty. In that case, I should probably stop streaming, go out in the yard naked doing rain angels. <laughs> There's a visual for you. Oh, I'm going to take, it's going to be a loud noise as I scrape these off the computer. I'm going to move those so I can see the screen, so I can see where to put my tape in the middle of this rascal. So funny, I can see it better on the screen than I can on person. I think it's the angle. Who knows? All right. Forty-three the other morning. Wow, no disturbing visuals. Too late. That would have been a good tip about two minutes ago, Gala. <laughs> I go. My mouth goes where my mind goes, and usually in that order. I say it before I'm really thinking it through. But you know, whatever. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to do? I feel like I should do something out of my comfort zone, color-wise, but I like my comfort zone. <laughs> Let's do, maybe, you know what? Let's do, maybe like some purples and pinks instead of my turquoise usual shenanigans. Let's see. So there's no purples in here. Oh, that one is. Just that one. The purples are over here mostly. Okay. Talking right to myself. Those watercolor pages would be great in collage. The These here 
I could probably, you know what? I could make photocopies of those on maybe onion skin or um, a thinner paper. That's true. I don't use a lot of green. Well, you know what? I'll use a little serpent green today because that'll go with the ultramarine purple and give me a little raccoon blend in here. Um, so let's see. Um, let's start there, shall we? Um, 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 um. Now, what kind of a midnight sky and storm? They're pretty purples. These are the Masha granulating watercolors over here that I'm using. Let's start with a little midnight sky. And I just go right out of the pan. I don't water it down and all that. I like a little pizzazz <laughs> for those of you who weren't aware. <laughs> um, do I want to do them vertical or landscape? Let's just do it like this. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to roll some on here. Hey, Dana. Make copies. And oh, there you go. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Ange. Let me bring in a little bit. And now let's go. My One of my favorites is Ultramarine Magenta. Look how crazy that is. Good crazy. Just throw it out there a little bit. Now, while this is still wet, hi, hey Lisa. Um, I'm going to grab some of this serpent green and I got to get this. Mixed in here a little bit for a little, a little raccoonish fun. You guys know what raccoon is, I'm sure. Let those mix for a minute. I might need to put some. More of that purple down here a little bit. Let that bring that coloration down there a ways. Oops. Flip my, flip my lid there. And maybe pull a little bit of this. Maybe more of this up this way. And then. Grab a little more of this to mix up here. I'll let that get kind of dark up there. I hope I have a random, well, that's not going to work, a random brush here. Maybe we'll just leave it and call it texture. There we go. Um, I need more something, something down here. You are sad. Why are you sad? I know that ultra memory magenta is good. Um, and a little bit more of 
this. These two colors together are just blubberly when they mix. Let it have its way with the, the paper there. Kind of so much would be great. Oh no! What happened? Judy, now do I know? I'm not sure I know who that is. That is sad. Oh my goodness. I hate to hear that stuff, but. Hmm. I'm going to put another blob of these two up here. I don't know what her last name was. What, Gayla, do you know if she was in our chat? We had several Judys in our chat. Um, All right, I'm going to let this sit for a minute. But look what this is doing. See those two colors make all those crazy colors and look like Raku pottery. Can't hate it, people. She came sometimes. Do you remember her scream name, uh, Gala? Which, well, I'm going to drop in, oh, I got this going here, a little Lissy Linka. What color do I want to drop in while well, it's wet there? Maybe this grape color, because this has purple. This is the, um, this is, uh, I think it's called fluid. I don't remember that full name of her channel in chat, though, is what's throwing me. Um, I'll show you this one. I can tilt it. It's called Fluid Watercolor Paper. Um, I'm going to use the Summer Lovin' set for the Lissy Linka colors and drop some in here. Oh, you're going to be a granny for the first time. Well, there's some good news. Hey, Allie. Yeah, I don't remember that name. <clears throat> This is the Summer Lovin' set. I'm going to use that pinky purple one there that I dropped a little bit of water on. And I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to try to get some in here while it's wet. Let's see what that does. It's going to do something magnificent. I just know it. Now this set aside over here is a lot more puddled up here. Maybe too wet. That's okay. I'll let some of this drift down here. And up into here.
All right. Okay, my friend, let's get back to a birthday party. Oh, fun. Oh, Izzy the social butterfly, little rascal. We actually got to do something fun last night and went to see some of our good friends, um, Bill and Yvonne. They live up in Pennsylvania. And um, we were headed there last weekend when my friggin' tooth broke for dinner. So we canceled, and now my tooth is back in order. My neck's jacked up. <laughs> Don't know what that's, well, you know what that is. But um, we went, I'm glad we went anyway. And we had really good steam crabs. They got snow crab legs on top of the steam crabs and some fried chicken. And we took a dish and we brought dessert and um, had a good old time. Touchdown Bills. I don't know who they're playing. I cannot acknowledge that woohoo if they're playing the Ravens. <laughs> All right. Now, this is going to take a minute to dry. So, I'm going to just sit this somewhere. And let's see. Work with me work with me. Whoever asked who the paper is, let's see, can you, no, I can't tilt it yet, never mind. But it's called Fluid Watercolor Paper. Fluid's the brand name, apparently. This is on a block. I'm not 100% thrilled with this one. It was okay till Dot told me it looked like a bird sitting on a busted egg. <laughs> now I can't unsee it. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Hey, Kathy. I will put this up here for another day and we'll throw something on here. Um, and I think what I'll do is maybe throw in these. This is stone ground. This is a gouache palette that I, I picked the colors, which you can probably tell. But I like mixing those in with some of my regular, my granulating colors. And this is an ocean palette that's got some, these are like my favorite two rows. But I do like some of this stuff up here too. I don't dislike any of it, but you know how that goes. So let's, um, there's more water. Let's get some of these going. Just in case. I don't even know what I'm going to use. Um, oh, and I wanted to use this one turquoise purple color in here. And I didn't. Maybe we'll start with that. <laughs> That's what we'll do. You can run, but you can't hide. So can I get this whole thing in here? Probably not. Oop, no, wrong way. If I move these, we can get it up there. There we go. Okay. So maybe we'll go sideways. Like so. Actually, I'm going to go this way because see, this is open here. This is where you peel the block, the papers off the block. Um, if I drip. I don't want it to drip there and get on my other papers. And I do plan on doing some intentional drips. A uh, little schmutz on there. So let's just, let's just see what happens. Starting with the turquoise. And there, <laughs> it's actually turquoise violet. It's more purple than it is turquoise. Just saying. 
Let's see. See if I can channel my best Allison Darwin. Oh, I have the wrong brush though for that. Oops, there it goes. Ran off before I could catch it. And I got a lot of paint on here, so I'm just going to try to take her tip and put another blob somewhere else. That's a really pretty color when you see it start to granulate. You're going to have to trust me. Don't agree with her, Susan. <laughs> Seriously. Just for that, I'm going to put Ocean Wave next to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a turquoise right there. I don't want that to run into that. And let's put this up here to run in with this one a little bit. There's another hair coming out of this brush. What is up with that? Now that one I'm going to have to let sit there for a little bit. I'm going to switch to this other brush. Oh, pretty stuff's happening there. Um, I was going to use another color too. What was I going to do? This totally threw me off because I was going to um, use some oceans, but in this palette there isn't a lot of Oh, purple for sure. Let's try this dark one here. Oh, what's going on there? I must have dropped water in there. I'll just drop more and make it look like it was intentional. Combine it with <laughs> Kathy. Yes, the first thing I think. Oh, you're daring, Gala, but in other other ways. I'm not sure what they are, but when I think of it, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm going to take this really dark blue that's in here. And let's do something down here. Let me get another grip. Grip, grip. Oh, I didn't want that one to go all the way either. I have a problem holding back on my drips. <laughs> Is it this color that I put on? And it did really cool stuff when it kind of ran into one of these other darker colors. Yeah, that's really running in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. See how it's kind of feathering in there? When it mixes, it makes a darker gray, of course, but he's pretty. Oh, I don't like this edge I put on there. That looks a little... My computer fan is running louder. Can you guys hear that? I don't usually hear it that loud. Trying to learn more about watercolors. I think I lack patience to allow the paint to move itself. Well, I have very little patience, I can tell you. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch it. 
but I do everything the opposite of what a traditional watercolorist would tell you to do. <laughs> so don't, don't follow me if you want to learn how to really watercolor. I am not the one you should follow. That is for sure. Let's see. What do I want to put in? Oh, this is a pretty color, too. This. Well, let's put in a, a gouache. What color is this? That's too green. That's what I thought. Let's do this one. For sure, this is a darker turquoise. You notice I always have these same colors. <sighs> Does anyone notice it? Not just starting with the same. It always end up in these cool palettes. Hey, Leah. Hanging in there. I just let them have their way with each other. <laughs> And Gail, I didn't say anything, which I appreciate. Um, what color do I want to join here with? Hmm. Oh, maybe this. This is kind of different out of the box. This light lilac color. What would that do? Touch both and get some, get some action going here. That's what he said. <laughs> I agree with that one. I don't, I am very non-traditional out there. Kind of go against the grain of normal in pretty much every aspect of my life. <laughs> oh, sad but true. Let me put a little bit of this over here just for giggles. Just for giggles. I didn't have enough water on this to let this really do its thing and break down. But that's beauty miss when it does. Gala would tell you I'm very loose with everything. <laughs> I should put, um, oh, you know what? Let's do something. That's campfire. Let's do this. I'm going to activate this one here. This one is called, what is that called? That one's grape. I'd have to look this, look at my cheat sheet. Hi, Charmaine. Welcome. So while this is still kind of wet in places, I'm going to grab some of this. This is one of the color shifts that's in the um, uh, Summer Lovin' Lizzie Linka set. And this is still wet down here. See if I can get that to go down. Well, of course I can if I drag it down there myself. I'll just manhandle it. And this, oh, this is still a little damp up here. But this is gouache, so I'm not sure. This gouache may eat this up and not let it, not play nice with it. That's okay. Gouache must do what gouache does. Let's put a little bit over here. This was mixing kind of well. Yeah, I can see that that because the gouache, you know, was not transparent. So, and the heavier metallics are going to sink lower. So, 
And this is kind of wet up here. Hmm. Interesting. Patty. Loser than me. I try to make everything look like it's together. <laughs> yes, you do. And it looks great. I love that too. Jasper, hey, how are you? I wonder if I could. No, let's not. Let's not get crazy. Maybe I'll put a little. I don't do very good making a circle on my own. I should use my template, but that would almost be crazy to do something that makes sense. So let's just try to put. Call it a moon, call it a sun. It's one of Allison's little signature things. And I am, yes, I am trying to copy her style to learn. You guys probably know that I don't sell anything, so I'm not trying to steal anything of hers. I'm trying to share her talent YouTube channel with you guys to go over to check her out. She's got an Oracle deck she made with 71 pieces of her art on Oracle cards. My, ah, I should have brought mine down here. Dag on it. I meant to show you guys. I didn't have to show you next time. Um, all right. Find my glasses again. Can't see. Patty, what brand of watercolors are in the silver white palette? These are gouache, not watercolor. And they are Stone Ground Paint Company. They're in Canada. But this, these are not watercolors. They're gouache. Ooh, the drips are cool flower stems. Oh, yeah. Yep, for sure. Oops, I don't want the I don't want the moon to drip. I don't need a crying moon. All right, let's see. Where are we with this piece? That may be dry enough to continue with something. Oops, press where I slid those Lissy Linka watercolors in there hither and yon and see what that raku kind of look does that i call it with just those two colors makes all those colors so they are granulating colors so there's you know there's multiple pigments two to three pigments in there and each pigment is a different color and that's why when it breaks apart you can see those different colors so now I've found two that are kind of complement each other with the ultramarine magenta and the serpent green in the um, Masha watercolors, uh, the granulating watercolors. So then, I mean, that gives you four or five right off the bat and they blend and create another one. And it's never ending fun. <laughs> so this is still a little bit damp. And I'm thinking... Move this in a safer place. Actually, I might use that next. I just wonder why they look different. Um, with the all these different colors. Yeah, that's the the granulation do granulation doing its magic. I mean, look at this piece up here closely at all those different colors that broke out in there. I did not, there's no yellow. Or orange that I put on there, but 
Yep, there it is. Isn't that crazy? There's another good shot it. Don't say a thing, Gail. <laughs> Oops, where am I? Take a look at that. That one's washed out. It's lighter because it was more water. But you really need a good bit of water to make them granulate. And the paper you're on depends, you know, helps that too. They won't look the same on hot press. Hey, Tam, on hot press that's smoother or with um, Upo. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this one sit a little bit longer because I think it should. I'm going to grab a piece of Upo. And I'm going to throw on some watercolors. The granulating ones. And let's just see what they do. They take a long time to dry on Upo. So this might not be dry by the time we wrap this baby up. But um, you can watercolor on Upo. It just has to sit for a while. And it lays there for a long time. Um, maybe we'll throw some of these back in there. Well, me... <laughs> if you'd see how I have these, I have drawers that are at a right angle to each other. And I'm trying to make use of the flat surface when I pull one out, and then I can't open the other one because I'm all jacked up here. Which do I want to use here? Well, let's use similar ones to that watercolor so you can see what happens with them. That's what we'll do. But let's pull out. On. Pure prism. Metallic prism. Where is the, Amora? <laughs> it's there. It's what the Northern Knights said. Think about it. Aurora, Northern Knights as a borealis. So let's get a couple of these juiced up here. I'm going to use the ones around this far side. That one's Aurora. That one I think is Dazzling Stars. Or is it? That one's Dazzling Stars. That's Polar Night. So look at my cheat sheet. Uh, hey, hey, Janet. Hey, Linda. Oh, hey, Lissy Link is in the house just as I'm juicing them up here. I am getting ready to play. Is this Alex or, or Lissy? Um, I'm getting ready to play on uh, UPO with some granulating watercolors and throwing some of yours in there to mix. I was just, I am letting this one dry a little bit longer. These are some of my granulating watercolors and you can see that I threw in, um, oh, this is heavy, going this way. You know, I just dropped some in while it was wet and let them do what they wanted to. I'm not quite ready to embellish. Focus, focus, focus. Come on, baby. Um, not quite ready to put some embellishing layers over this yet. There's some little puddles in there, but that's what I did with, uh, that was one of the, um, I think the grape in the summer love and set that I did that with. So now I wanted to show everybody what, how these granulating colors work on UPO and this will not, you know what, I'm going to put it on a board so I can move it because it will not dry during the stream. I can promise you that. 
so I can lift this up and move it. So let's do, um, I'm going to use a bigger brush, I think. And let's do these similar colors here, right, to get some of that Raku stuff going to see what it does on the Yupo. So you, you guys know what Yupo is, right? It's, it's basically plastic. It's non-porous paper. So whatever you do lays up on the top of the surface. Might have to go out. That's a little bit bigger. There we go. Might have, it lays on top of the surface and it will keep mingling for a long time. Um, if you remember, I used to use Yupo a lot and did it with watercolors and different inks and different things. So, um, sorry, I was just catching up on chat. Well, Janet, don't, ex don't set ex expectations too high. <laughs> I haven't used these granulating watercolors on, on Yupo yet. So let's just less talk and more sling and paint. How about that? So I'm going to start with this. Ultramarine magenta. And I'm just going to put blobs out here like I used to do when I did these and just let it see what happens. And these brush strokes, they'll all, let me zoom you in for a little bit here on one little section while we're doing this so you can kind of see what happens. These brush strokes will go away. I put some more water in there and let it really give it a shot to granulate. And now I'm going to take some of this. You can already start see it breaking apart. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm going to come back with some of this serpent green. And this is where these Raku effects come in here. Oops, that I love. Come in here. Let's break this up again. And it might just turn it to mud on this paper because it can lay. See what's happening right here? Come up with some really cool stuff. It looks like it's going to. And see the colors breaking apart in the magenta. I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this. Hang on. I'm going to drop, I'm going to grab some serpent green. And I'm just going to drop bits of it in here. And let it kind of, just see what happens. Get more down in here. And this will, may end up an abstract mess. And that's, sometimes that's really cool too. This really got granulated here. It looks like grit in there. See what that looks like on its own? Hello, focus. Work with me. There you go. See how that really broke down into bits like that? But look at these colors where they're merging here now. I could sit here and watch this all day. So let's go back to some of this. And I'm going to put some, just drop some of this. Oops, it's not wet enough. Let's just see what happens. It could be a big old mess. Oops, I forget this is taped down. I keep slinging the paper. And then as you come along here with another color, actually, I'm going to use that with the, I'm going to grab one of my, one of these Lizzie Linka colors here. Let's go. I'm going to use this Aurora. This is one of my favorite colors. This is the, the Northern Night set. You can't get much yummier than that. But I'm going to throw some of this in just along this edge. Oh, I'm off camera. And let's just see. I'll lift this up when I get it laid down. And I'm just tapping the brush. Just trying to make a, a border, for lack of a better term, around here. And just see what, see what happens. And maybe we'll just splat some a little bit more water. Now let's squeeze the brush. Ooh, look at that. Hello, lover. That was just a big splat that went in there and started sparkling its way through. But here's the, um, this light is not very good. I'll have to, I'll have to get that information from you again. Um, I didn't see if this was Alex or Lizzie, but 
I think it was Alex telling me about a, um, uh, a light that, that they use in their studio that gives a lot truer view of what these shiniest, most sparkly watercolors in the world do. I'm tell I have a lot, a lot, a lot of metallic colors. And trust me when I tell you. Um, let's see. Let's go back. Let's put in, we'll switch up colors a little bit. And let's go with, um, what am I going with? This one's called turquoise violet. And it breaks into those two colors. And let's just... Lump that in there, and you can see them. Whatever pigment is strongest will take over and push into it. Can you see what's happening there? You can see this breaks into a turquoise and purple. So, like two of my favorite colors on the planet. Sunlight, yeah. I actually have a sunlight lamp here as one of my lights look over my work area, but it just, maybe I have to get closer to it, but it's not situated where I can get closer to it and have the camera uh, pick it up. It's kind of out of range there. You can see here where this is already breaking down. I'm going to mix... Um, Let's see. What can I mix with that one? Let's see what. Look at all these crazy colors up here. That's two watercolors. Ever tried Fabriano? Um, actually, I have. I have some. Oh, no, let me pick this up so you can see this coloration right here, where those two are granulating into purple and blue. That bright teal and a pinky purple. Uh, you can't hate that. This is getting real crazy in here. Crazy in a good way. Let's throw, oh, let's throw some Polar Night up in here. Let's see what happens with that. It's going to splat some around there. It's going to keep moving. It's not going to stay there. You know what else always looked cool on uh, have you tried mineral paper? I do. I have some. Is that Craft Maven Deb? Hey, yeah, Deb. I do. I have um, Terra Skin and I have, um, there's two different brands I have. Terra Skin. I forget. I like I like all of them. But the Terra skin is real. Uh, it's not like I could pick this up and pretty much have it hold its shape. The Terra skin is really um, really limp. Yeah, Xander's going to have a nice order coming. That's I'm anxious to see how you... I'm, well, I know you're going to love it. I know that already. Let's throw... This is... I believe this is Dazzling Stars. Let's throw some of that over there, just because we can. And then I'm going to get another granulating color in here. This, <laughs> this is so crazy looking. It's just unbelievable what these colors do. Let's try this cobalt green. This is a good color. Let's see what happens here. I like to put it down on the UPO. This one granulates almost immediately. And this is green. This kind of reminds me of Cascade Green. For you guys that know what Daniel Smith's Cascade Green is. But I try to put a lot of pigment down here. And then just let the tip of my brush join what's there and you see all these brush strokes they'll go away but it's already forcing that to move and i can't can't just see it because it's in the way i'm trying to move all this stuff 
See how I made this streak and like this is coming down into it. It's just spreading everywhere. As long as you don't put colors on here that you know will turn to mud, like you wouldn't want to use a lot of purple and a lot of yellow and expect it to not, uh, that it won't go to a brown color that it makes when it does that. Let's go back and pull some of this crazy in here again. This is the magenta, ultramarine magenta. These are Masha watercolors that I'm using and the Lissy Linka, of course, the metallics. But this, the granulating, they're Masha. And um, they are scrumptious. If you like granulating watercolors and you haven't tried, Ma it's like Marsha without the R, Masha watercolor on Etsy. Great customer service. Now let's do a little bit of serpent green on the border there and see what happens. Uh, when it's dried, I don't know. I It's usually... Um, what I've done in the past has, has, you know, stayed on there pretty well, but, um, I will let you know, it's probably won't dry fully. Look at that, how the green's pushing up in there. Can you see that? I'm just going to go all around here with a little bit of this pigment and let's just see what happens. Depending on what pigment it touches, it'll push through or not. You can see some of these um, spaces that stayed white on here. Uh, like this right here keeps, that's probably got oil from my fingers from at some point moving the paper around or just when I pulled it off the pad. Um, and uh, you can take alcohol and wipe it with a paper towel or just with a brush sometimes just scrub it with a brush with water on it and it'll break that up but that's usually what that is or oils from your hands uh, that got on the paper this this again this green is breaking down it looks like pepper in there so i don't mind that but i'm gonna i'm gonna do this again <gasps> oh look what i just did i <laughs> i just ripped the whole pan out <laughs> And uh, let's do this and let this see what that does there. Let's try doing that. Where some of these piles are. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> hey, Carolyn. Something new to buy. Let me spend your money. Let me get some more metallics in here. Let's try this one here. This one I think is Twilight, this purple. Again, this is the Northern Night set. So check out lissylinka.com. Um... They have a brand new seven, a set of seven. I didn't receive mine yet, but it's on the way. Um, fall colors called Autumn Glow. You can see the colors on the website. Follow them on Instagram. It's L-I-S-I-L-I-N-K-A. Um, good stuff. See these right here where it's, re oh, you can't, where it's resisting a little bit. My big finger's getting in it, probably. Oh. All right. Let's see. Isn't that crazy looking, though? Crazy, I tell you. I thought you meant miss the whole thing, and then it would be a muddy puddle. You could try pushing stamps in it to remove color. 
there's a ton of liquid on here and a stamp, it would just wash back over uh, at this point. Those colors in there are really pretty. Let me put some more of this Aurora in here where it's darker. Brighten that up a little bit. These pigments just dance on these palettes. It's just kind of mesmerizing. I'm kind of easily entertained, but see them just dancing in the water. Oops. Where are they? And I had it focused. You can't hate that, people. Break up some of that grainy bits in there. All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> kind of running out of real estate here. So let me see. Let me try to come in as close as I can with the camera. And then let me put a better light on this and see if you can see. I can uh, see my phone gets in the way. There you go. You can see a little bit of it. It's not the best representation. Wait a minute. We're off the camera here. When it zoomed in, I got a real small space. There you can kind of see them still dancing. As long as it's liquid like that, they're still kind of like moving and reflecting. But I'll be sure to post pictures and a video of this so I can move it when this dries. Let's see if I can show you. Well, that's zoomed in too much now. Hang on. That's getting crazy. Crazy zooming in there. Let me pull it back and then try to just hang it up here. But look at all those colors. That bright red that came out of there is kind of surprising me. All right, I'm going to try to find a flat space. <laughs> no, I meant more droplets or maybe a syringe with small needle to create a thin line of water. And okay, you make me think you could do. Oh, you can do something very similar on here. Um, oh, Lord, it's that too long. Um, I used to do UFO a lot, and I would mount them then on um, cradled boards. Um, actually, one year at our retreat, I taught that class. Joan, you'll remember who else is here? Zandra, Gala. Um, and we all did them, but it was, um, it's fun stuff to work with. Um, I do remember that Daniel Smith Lunar Black was one of my favorite colors on UPO. It pushed everything and it just, it just exploded on the paper. It, it did really cool things. All right. So let me, I think I want to go back. Now, which color, you know what? I'm going to use campfire. I love this campfire color um, in the um, Summer Lovin' set. This is probably one of my favorite sets. But every time I get another one out, I go, yeah, that's my favorite. I did make the mistake one time of... Um, thinking, hey, this one, once it dries, would be really cool sprayed with alcohol. <laughs> be very careful with what you spray with alcohol because it it just, it almost cleared the paper of pigment. It balled wherever it dropped it, where you were down to bare UPO and it pushed everything aside. And um, yeah, it, uh, it did a number on it. I mean, if you're looking for that, that's alcohol is your friend, but <laughs> 
if you don't want anything that quite that uh, severe, um, not your friend. So this brush, I've been using this to make these real fine line, like one hair brush hair circles of watercolor. And uh, it is a Tintoretto three slash zero. You can see how long the, the bristles are. And it looks like it fans out like that, but it is down to, you know, a really fine tip. There we go. Tintoretto. I get them at Jackson Art. But that's what the brush is. Somebody asked me that online. All right. Let's just get this lubed up here. Now this uh, campfire color has a really cool shift to it. Um, do I have that? Hang on a second. Let me look and see if I have that uh, swatch paper I did a while back. This one right here, I believe, is campfire. And I don't know if you'll be able to see all the different colors that shifts into. You see almost a reddy, orange, brassy, bronze, pinky color that comes out of there. So that's the one I'm using. And I'm thinking those colors might go good with all this, all this crazy going on here. I'm going to pull you in a little bit again. You guys are going to get dizzy. April! Hello, my dear. Okay. So I try to load this up. But you got to watch because if you have the paint too watery, as soon as you hold it upright, it will drip down on the tip and make a blob. So I kind of watch what it's doing. And just touch that tip and let it let it blob elsewhere because I want to try to get a really fine, a really fine hair-like line. And let's just let's just go for it. What the heck was that? Got something on the brush from my paper. That turned out a little too fine. So I'm just going to go back over it. That was barely touching the paper. And I think I had too much water in it. There wasn't more pigment. That's okay. That's all okay. When they dry, I'll show you a little bit more with the better light on it. Autumn glow sets beautiful. So one thing to consider, these are the highest quality pigments that you can buy to make these. And I can attest to the fact that these are the best metallics I've ever used. And these pans, the shape of these pans hold 20 to 30% more pigment than a, a traditional half pan holds. So that's important to, to understand and realize too. Let's do, what am I going to do? Let's do one here. It's a sweet spot to get just the right amount of liquid and the right amount of pigment on your brush to make this do what I want it to do. I'm not always the boss of my brush. <laughs> and you got to kind of hold it up. Let's do something right here. Just to try to hit those little, the little tiny bits on there. And the free shipping. Yep. I mean, I was shocked. And honestly, I thought the same thing before I ordered. So I ordered a, a couple of the um, 
uh, tutorial sets where you get these, the little bits of these. And at first, and then I ordered a trio, like, oh, this isn't the proper trio. Like, you know, where you get the sets of three. And um, I thought, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm coming back. And now I'm a, I am a collector. So I'm also going to take one of these little uh, dotting tools. They're for nail art. People use these to put little dots on fingernails. And on each one has a little tiny brush tip on the other end of it. There's like a set of five of them. Um, so I'm going to do, turn this so I can get to where I want to go. Over here. I like to put these in like some of the darker areas. Um, yes, I'm hooked. It's a cult. <laughs> you sucked me in. Around nine half pens. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, Susan. <laughs> hey, we can't take it with us. I'll have the best art supplies in the nursing home. <laughs> so I'm just going to drop some dots of this in some of the darker areas. That's where it really, the contrast really shows up. And as, as you make more than one dot with this tool, of course, there's less and less paint. So the dots get smaller, which is kind of cool. You learn how to, if you want them all the same size, do one or two dots and reload it. But if you want it to trickle off and have different little sizes, just keep going. Keep on going. And this area up here is really cool. I'm just going to make like a, a few in this little bit. I don't want to cover up the background of that. Uh, all that granulation there, but I want to put a little something in there. Which one, which one will toy be moving to? We can all join you. Oh, you mean, which one am I moving to? Well, I have a couple under consideration at the moment. <laughs> I think Dave's looking into one for me. <laughs> Those, um, that's probably, uh, Jasper, the, um, a set that, that I, uh, colors that I use the most, just a standard crystal gold, crystal copper, crystal silver, and crystal copper. But of course I have all the hollow ones too. I was at a, um, an art retreat years ago and Everybody went to the bar after the, was in a hotel. Everybody went to the bar after the day and had a bite to eat and was having some wine. And they start talking about their husbands complaining about their craft supply habits. And one of them said her husband told her she can't take it with her. And she said, the hell I can't. I'm already working on decoupaging my coffin. <laughs> oh, no. Call her girl. Okay, where am I going to go over here? Not as many really dark spots, but we can make some impact. You don't need much of this to make an impact, I promise you. In person, it's so much. Oh, I got to get a better light so you guys can really appreciate this. But it's, I mean, Xander can tell you she has some. April's got some. I'm not sure who else is online. CB. Um, Tam, did you get... I forget who all told me. Jan, probably. I don't remember. I don't remember much these days, but... Right, these will be a little bit more shiny when they dry. But... See, the dry circles show up better than the dots do right at the moment. Hang on, that's just whiting it out. Oops, and I bumped the camera with my phone. 
first class act here, people. Yeah, it's a really tricky angle for me to try to hold this up in the air. My camera hangs suspended over my desk from a monopod. So it's like a pendulum. If I touch anything, it swings. And the... Um, makes it a little tricky. When I move the, the cord, because this pad of paper is so big, it moves the camera a little bit. And just as I get it focused... I mean, you can't hate that, people. You can't hate it. How about if you buy the crystal set of three and I add this? Oh, wow. Jump on that one, Jasper. Jump on that one. What else do I want to do? Oh, I should do some a little scripting down the road here. This is a gold... Um, Hey, Yvonne. <laughs> I have to go back and watch up to this point to see where we... Um, and Lizzie Linka is on... They're in the chat today if you have any questions. So I think I might... Um, This needs a little more, a little something, something, a little something, something more over here. Oh, hang on. Let me look at something real quick. Oh, you know what? Let me do some of my, no, some of my, some of my imitation of Alison Darwent. <laughs> Uh, and her little birds that she puts in stuff to kind of put, I like a little pop of black in just about everything. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's just, that's just Alex. It's only Alex. <laughs> um, I'm just going to throw some in here. Just a little tiny bit here and there to, for a little pop of. A little pop of black. This pen, this whatever this is, marker pen, really allows me to do, to do these. I'll hold it up so you can see how it actually does kind of look like a bird. You are right about that, April. Really good customer service. Unbelievable. Uh, look how, how small. I think I showed you guys this last week. And very flexible that brush tip is. This is a... Um, well... It's by Pentel, and it's called a Brush Sign Pen Artist. Brush Sign Pen Artist. That, that, that sounds a little goofy to me, but that's what it says. If anybody's interested, I'm trying to get the number up there. SESF30C. I got it on Amazon, I'm sure. But... See those little rascals? Because I can bend the tip to make that fat wing to the right. It actually almost looks bird-like. <laughs> those of you who know me know that I cannot... Hey, Dot. I cannot draw a crooked line. So. Any help is uh, a big deal to me. Because mama can't draw. Oh, that one was a little contrived.
just a little a little something black it's hard to see from there but they it is in there and it gives you a little something else to kind of look at and then i took um it must have been my black tosca pen that um 0.7 millimeter do you want the link for the black only or all the colors too all the colors janet oh maybe you should put both in <laughs> Oh, mercy. So now I'm going to take, let me zoom in a little bit again. In and out, in and out, in and out. Here we go. Well, then put the color link in there, girl. Is this focused? More or less. Okay. Um, so now I'm just going to take this Posca pen and maybe fill in some little areas with some black dots just to give it a little more interest. And I'm going to go in here where the paper showing through. And I don't have the patience to sit there and make every dot perfect. Can't do it. I'm going to click on this link myself to see what Janet's getting me into. Oh, look at that. Huh. What do you know? Okay, back to the stream. Focus, Patty, focus. <laughs> Dang, I see. Speaking of expensing rabbit holes, I have a brass nib and holder. It's on its way. <laughs> you will love it, though. You will love it, I promise. Um, I don't have many holes there to put this black in. Let's fill up the bottom of this little bit here. Up to where the bird's getting in flight. And maybe a little bit. You can maybe go off the page here and do some down here. Who says I got to do it? within the composition. All right, let's do some over here. The scripting is always the scary part. <laughs> you never know how that's going to come out. And I just feel like it's. I need to add it. It makes it me. Mine. Mine. It's mine. And I thought about using some stencils to make some marks on here, but it's the colors are so cool and so pretty. I hate to cover it up with um, like acrylic paint that I would put on with them, um, uh, you know, with a stencil. Let's go down here in this little cloud that came down in the water around this. A little something up here. All right. See, just a little, just a little bit with the dots here and there. All right. And then some over here. Like you guys have never seen a black dot before. <laughs> See, I told you, great customer service. You can't make it up. I wouldn't tell you it was great if it wasn't great. I wouldn't tell you it was great if it was just okay. You know, some of these, I had too much water. And now that some of these circles are drying, it's not. I mean, it's definitely sparkly, but you don't see the individual strokes. I think I may get gutsy and go back. And try to 
make another pass over that. This could be a boo-boo. Where is it? This one here is... I think I need more on this page, though. I only have two on each. That seems weird. I'm usually a threesy person. Huh. Okay. Well, let's go threesies. Let's go up here. This is a lot of action down here. This, this corner is kind of boring up here. So we'll do the third one up here. Well, let's see. Oops, see, there's a lot coming off of there. There we go. And now... Ah! Let's just do it. I'm not looking at the chat while I'm doing this. Should be obvious. This one here could use another little emphasis on the more pigment. Can already see that's better. And um, oh, this one I don't have three, but you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do this. I did this on another painting, and it looked really cool with this brush. Oh, thanks, Joan. See, Susan, I've never steered you wrong. Let that be told to all the world. I may get drag, drag you down a rabbit hole, but you'll be glad that I did. <laughs> I did. I'm just going to do that. Ah, here we go. Just shush and do it. Make these long little marks that this brush makes in kind of a place where there's not a whole lot going on. That's what I'm going to do. And I did it. Um. Maybe a couple up in here, just three. I'm feeling three up here. And let's see, this one's kind of not bad. I'll say so myself. Let's go for five now here and go into the green too. See, just those little, it makes these long streaks. Just as another little mark in there. Oh, and now i got to wait for these to dry before I do the scripting. <laughs> that wasn't a good plan. 3.30. I'm going to be out of here by quarter to four. So let's see. Oh, let's go back to this one. Let's move this off to the drying station, which is yet another random open drawer. <laughs> And go back to this. Oh, I forgot I put the uh, the Lizzie Link in here. And these are some out of the um, Northern Night set. Made the moon out of a um, one of the ships. So the the Summer Lovin set. Wait, Summer Lovin. Well, hold on. Now I don't know. Am I lying? No, no, no. It is Summer Lovin because this was. Um, this is a shifter. I forget the name of this one at the top, but it's this is the Summer Lovin' set. And they are color shifting, not just metallic and not just holographic, but color shifting. So let me see if I can make you see this color shift. I'm going to make you see it. <laughs> Hang on. Let's see. Just going to fly what is on. So looking at the moon. Urgh. See the purple in there? And now if I can, i got to get it on a different angle. There's blue and a green. And it's also, I believe it's also holographic. But it definitely is a shifting color. You're seeing that pinky purple. And from here, I'm seeing like a um, seafoam green in it. A minty green. 
And here's where I dropped it in where it was uh, wet watercolor and just let it twinkle itself to pieces and move while it was still wet. And I put it in with the dark, right? And down here in this dark bit, look at that. Ah, you can see the holographic in that one pretty good. You can't hate it, people. But see here where I said in that with that gouache that we might lose some of it. We did lose a little bit of it um, because the gouache is um, opaque. And then the, the metallic glittery bits are heavier than a light watercolor would be. So I thought we'd lose some of it, but we didn't lose all of it. It didn't take it all away. That little bit right there is really pretty. Oh, and I dripped some down the, I dripped some into the drip. You can even see, oops, you can see it down here. Well, can you? Why did it get dark all of a sudden? <laughs> Am I blacking out or is something happening with the lights? <laughs> Come on, I want to show the little bits on here. That seems like it's going, it is going dark. Why is it doing that? I don't know. Patty, summer loving colors all have the hollow pigments as well. A woman's profile on the right with big hair. Here we go. Well, that's usually what Dot's telling me what she sees and whatever I'm painting. <laughs> Let me turn my light off before I hurt myself there. So here's this one I can play with for a few minutes. Um. Mm -hmm. um, and there's that hair that dried in there. Okay, maybe I should start off with a little scripting because that'll dry quicker. And this isn't my favorite masterpiece of all times. Yeah, Jasper, come on when I stream again after you get them and let me know how you like them. I already know. Okay, this is a uh, pinata brass alcohol ink. You can see the pigments all settle there, right? But I put it in a fine line bottle. And so this is just the brass alcohol ink. I'm going to try to... What I should do is put it in one of these and have like a pen to hold. But I'm not going to do it right now. Got about 10 minutes left. Took the hollow. Oh, you took the hollow sets. Had the hollow silver. Okay, here we go. This to me is always the ballsy move because you don't know. I don't know how my wrist is going to work and how it's going to come out of the tube and all that good stuff. Um, so what I say is just start scripting and less chatter. Let's get, get, get it going. Hey, Virginia. Better late than never. That's what I've always said. So I'm trying to decide where I want to come down with this. Maybe I'll start and just kind of go in here. Oh, here we go. Sweet Moses. Now that spit and spewed up here. Look where it hose me up. See what I mean? Can hose you up. But you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. Because if I try to fix it, I will for sure really hose it up. So that's okay. But that didn't come out as nice as some of my other ones did. I wonder if some of this, a little bit of a needle in here. Yeah, there is, um, there is a difference, Jasper. Let me see. Do I have a... Um, Okay, maybe I can show you with this with my cell phone. 
So see down the bottom of this, this is just on a piece of black bond paper. I was, I was swatching some of them uh, a while back. These two here, it's crystal gold, crystal silver. It's hollow gold, hollow silver underneath of it. Let me bend this so I can hold it a little bit better. And you can't really tell the difference until you see the correct, um, I'll try to show you the gold stacked on top of each other. And then see the colors in the gold on the bottom and the colors in the silver on the bottom, but up top it's just silver and silver sparkles, gold with gold sparkles. And then there you see the holographic down the bottom. Can you tell? Yes, it is. Lissylinka.com. And Lissy Linka team is actually in chat today. So if you have any questions, we are here to help. But so you did see that then, Jasper, you could tell. The lighting makes all the difference when it's something that, that it's that close in color, right? Both silver and both gold. But there definitely is a difference. Now, this did not make me happy. Oh, you know what? This is also on the, um, well, it, that's not why. But this is also on the um, arches paper. And this cold is a little rougher than one of the other ones I was using. So I wonder if my needle just skipped where this was supposed to go like this and come back around. It skipped there. So it could have been. They are. There's not. There's not one that I don't love. April asked me the other day, if you could only have three Lizzie Linka watercolors, which three would you pick? I wanted to pick three sets of seven. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. That's a, that's a hard question. But the, the ones you're getting, the crystal, crystal, silver, gold, copper. Well, this set right here. See, I put my cheat sheets on the bottom, pure prism. Hang on, let me get my window back up here. Um, these are, oh no, is that, that's pure prism. That's not the one I wanted. Metallic prism. So these, these four here, silver, gold, copper, and rosé are I think some of the ones that are available in the sets of three, but they are, you, know, you can see how much I use them. I actually, when I was getting my sets together as I bought a set of three and then I was changing them around and I had those three in a set like this. So I had it on my desk all the time using it, but it was confusing telling you guys, you know, well, this is it, but I replaced some of this and that. But now I've collected enough to fill in the gaps and I have the true sets of seven, um, how they're sold. There's a long way around the, a long way around the, uh, the horn to do that. But um, I got there. What is that? Oh, that's the flowers. Yeah, I have the I have the um, autumn glow set coming and the hollow flowers. Only <laughs> just a few hours. That's all it took to figure it out. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you got that right. Um, yeah, I'm not wild about what happened there. Well, I'm not going to worry about pressing myself to do too much more at this juncture because I've only got a few minutes. Xander comes on at four o'clock. If anybody wants to, uh, is able to hop over there to watch Z. Um, let's take the paper off of here. Or the tape rather. 
Somebody asked me what kind of paper this is. The tape comes off really well. This is frog tape. Delicate surface frog tape is what this is. So I don't know if it's the tape or the paper because I don't tape a lot of stuff. And this is on a this is on a um, a block, but the block. Hang on. Oh shoot! And there I said that, and there I tore the paper. Ah! Um, well, it's not going to the Smithsonian, so don't get too upset. Yeah, this is open on the sides, and it's only glued on the top and the bottom, um, which isn't my favorite. I was just trying to use this up, and it, it's okay paper actually. Um, but this is what it is. Fluid watercolor cold press. It's called an easy block. But it's easy, but it, it lets you make possible mistakes. So here, let me see if I can show you this shift in this Aurora. That's one of my favorites. One of my desert island favorites. <laughs> Oops, hang on, I've got to turn the light on. Let's see if you can see the shift. It's so hard in any brand to show the shifts on a camera. You can see some of it, but you can't see every angle that I, no matter what I do. I mean, I've seen people kind of roll the paper, right? And kind of curl the paper like that so you can see it at different angles. It's still, I mean, like right now where I'm looking at this, it almost looks like a hot peach color, like a pinky peach color. And can I make you see? Oh, there you go. There you can see a little bit of the pinky peach. And then you turn it down. It's kind of a bronzy color. Oh, I could eat that. You just can't hate that, people. Oh, thanks, Dot. All right, guys, I am getting ready to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for joining. And um, Lissy Linka, glad you got to pop in and uh, hang out with us for a little bit. That was nice. And and um, hopefully you'll you'll see. Ja I know Jasper's going to order. But uh, you guys ought to check out that new Autumn Glow set. I'll be showing you that as soon as it gets into my grubby little hands. <laughs> I'll be showing that to you guys. So, oh, nice. Susan placed an order. See, I did make you do it. <laughs> oh, anytime, Jan. I stick with what I do best. Enable everybody. Take you all down with me. We'll have the best craft supplies in the poorhouse. They'll all be jealous. <laughs> see, big Carol Bood that you see on there, um, Alex. That's um, that's we call her CB, but that's Carol. The place she placed an order. I think you got the summer loving set, didn't you, CB? Thanks, Lisa. Jan's loading up her cart. <laughs> I knew you would. It was just a matter of time. So I'm going to let these sit out and dry before I put my caps on them. All right, kids, I will see you, who knows, hopefully next weekend. Uh, I did finally put in my, my um, retirement date for the end of the year, actually January 3rd. That's the day Dave's going to go out. I'm going to retire the same day uh, he does. So I'll be working until the end of the year. And then after that, who knows? Where I'll turn up. Oh, the last time you got summer loving and you ordered the autumn today. That's my girl. You're going to love them, CB. All right, guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging with me. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon, I hope. Have a great week. Oh, thanks, Deb. Yeah, I go to the neurologist tomorrow to see what's going on with my neck again. Hopefully another series of uh, the spinal injections of steroids will do the trick for another five years <laughs> world watch out uh, you know too much cb keep your voice down <laughs> all right guys thanks bye-bye